Shout hallelujah. If you are set for an encounter tonight, shout a bigger hallelujah. If you know this night is going to be a night of transformation for you and it's going to change your story for the best, I want you to shout a bigger hallelujah. I welcome everyone to day three of the ongoing conference. I pray tonight the Lord will meet us mightily in the name of Jesus. Can we lift up our hands and begin to thank the Lord for all that he has done in this conference right from day one, day two, and even in the morning session today. Let's begin to appreciate his holy name. Thank him for his hands that has come mightily upon us. Thank him for destiny that has been transformed. And let's thank him for all that he's going to do again to this evening. Because he is set to stretch his hands of power over our life again in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for all that you have done since this conference began. We thank you for day one. We thank you for day two. We thank you for the first session, the morning session today. And we thank you for what you are here to do again this evening. We thank you. We glorify your holy name. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Psalm 84 verse 7 says, They go from strength to strength, every one of them in Zion that appeared before the Lord. Lord, cause your word to impart my life with strength today. Open your mouth and pray. Cause your word to impart my life, my destiny with strength today in the name of Jesus. Strength for exploit. Strength to transcend in all areas of my life. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open your mouth and pray. I hope you are, just, you are praying right there, wherever you are. Cause your word to come mightily and impart my life with strength. Strength for exploit, strength for progress in all areas, strength to, trans to transcend and to be a force in my generation. Open your mouth and begin to appreciate, to pray and appreciate him. Father, we pray in this evening that you will cause your word to impart our life with strength. You will do mighty things in our life and our life will not remain the same. Thank you, Father, because you have answered us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. I say in Jesus' name we have prayed. Let's commit the servants of God prepared, anointed for this night. Ask the Lord to help him. Ask the Lord to grant him auction. Ask the Lord to baptize him with grace. As he stands here to speak today, let him speak mysteries. Let him speak the word that will bring an end to our struggles. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, I will pray for your servants that you are prepared for this night. We pray for, we pray for grace for him. We pray for fresh unction. We pray, oh God, for Holy Spirit to take over this arena in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, that as he ministers, he will speak mysteries into our lives in the name of Jesus. He will speak the word of power that will move us to the next level, that will make us to transcend in all areas of our life. Oh, Father, we pray, baptize your servant with strength, baptize him with unction, baptize him with utterance, Baptize it with grace. Let the word come out mightily. Let there be no di di distance or disturbance in the flow of your word tonight. In the name of Jesus, tonight at the end of this great evening, we want to have cause to glorify your name. Thank you because you have answered us. In Jesus' name we are prayed. If you believe this, your prayer has been answered, I'd like you to put your hands together for the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Jesus. What I'm about to say is going to strike a chord, a chord of repentance. So just sit back, relax, listen with your minds ready because God is about to speak. It all began. Man fell, hell yeah, dead end, he's a cost head. The devil yelled, man has failed. It all began. The riches of man was drained, his spirit frail and easy to invade. Man rebelled with the father of rebels against his own father. God was so sorry he made man. Grieved to his heart, he shed a tear or two, and the earth was flooded beyond repairs. But wait, was it really God's tears that flooded the earth? Read your Bible and find out for yourself it all began. 
God was so sorry he made man but he never stopped loving man he had a plan a plan to salvage the nation he called it salvation God being God spoke once and twice it was heard in the mouth of the prophets from generation to generation of his good plan to salvage the nation but man being man heard all and did none rebelled more and grieved God they never learned God says come man says go he says go they say to he says get love they say get lost get up get down God says make up break up come here man says star weeder man never learns if the trees cannot survive outside the soil and the fish cannot survive outside the waters and the parasite cannot survive outside its host why does man think he can survive outside God man never learns but God being God has spoken once and twice we will keep hearing it in the mouth of the prophets and guess what his prophets are still speaking they are saying oh ye man come up from your fallen state to your original state of kingship and authority for the next expectation of the creator waited for the manifestations of the sons of God it is your responsibility to be king over the earth transcend God bless you Reverend Sam Aboyeji joined the First Square Church in 1988 and served the movement in various leadership capacities before he was ordained the minister of the church in 2001. He started his working career with the premier stockbroking firm in Nigeria, the Nigerian Stockbrokers Limited NSL, a subsidiary of NEL Merchant Bank PLC, now Sterling Bank PLC. From 1987, 1992 where he trained as a stockbroker and licensed as an authorized dealing clerk in the Nigerian Stock Exchange in 1989. He left Nigerian Stockbrokers Limited NSL to join Shell Petroleum Development Company of Nigerian Limited SPDC Corporate Treasury. In 1992 as an investment analyst with responsibility for money and capital market investments of the pension fund. He was a pioneer staff of Shell Trustees Nigeria Limited, where he had responsibility for building and managing its capital market portfolio until his transfer to the Community Relations Department of SPDC in Worry in the year 2000. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome with Jesus joy in her heart, Reverend Sam Abedi. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. I want to thank God for this privilege to be here at the grand finale 
of the KC 2020 that we had to make a youth conference. I want to start by congratulating the leadership of our youth, particularly our pastor Benga Olowe, coordinating the youth ministry. I want to bless the name of the Lord for the success of this program that in spite of coronavirus, we couldn't be stopped. And to the Lord be all the glory in the name of Jesus. I want to thank God for the cream of ministers that have ministered to us in the course of this program. And uh, I'm highly privileged to actually be the one to serve the bottom pot having to round up the entire conference. I want to thank God that in the course of this conference, we have had minister to us our brand new international president in person of Reverend Randy Remington, all the way from the United States of America. We have also had other men of God including our own very Reverend Dr. Funsho Omowo and our youth coordinator himself, Pastor Gwenga Olowe, Bishop Samuel Wan Alawode, and Pastor Jerry Eze, among several others. And I know the Lord has used them in one way or the other to touch your lives. But I am trusting God that in the course of this ministration which is like the grand finale of the program the lord will do a complete work in jesus name whatever is remaining to be done the god of heaven and earth will carry it out in the mighty name of jesus so first to say that in the course of this ministration as the lord ministered it to me I'll be touching a lot of the other things that have been mentioned to you earlier. And I want you to pay very rapt attention because repetition is part of the law of learning. The word of God keeps reminding us and reminding us of critical things that we need to pay attention to. And I want to bless the name of the Lord that we have the opportunity to bring these issues again to the fore. I'll be speaking on transcending into greater glory. Transcending into greater glory. And I just want us to know before we pray that anytime we're talking about glory and we're talking about transcending into glory, we're talking about a story of transformation. A story of change. A story of improvements. Because although man was created primarily for God's glory, according to Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7, even everyone that is called by my name, I have called, I have created them for my glory. That's why Isaiah chapter 43 verse 7 says, However, some will never get to the fullness of their glory on earth before they depart. Because glory is in levels and in cadres. We're told in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 41 that there is one glory of the sun, another glory of the moon, and another glory of the star. And evil stars differ from one another in glory. So by the special grace of God, I see you getting into greater glory in the name of Jesus. You will fulfill your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. You will get to the fullness of that which is your glory in the mighty name of Jesus. What is glory? Glory, in short, is revealed excellence. Revealed excellence. 
You remember that popular scriptures? It say, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all eyes shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Whatever is not seen cannot be glory. Glory is revealed excellence. It's something that can be seen. And I'd like to quickly draw your attention to the fact that there are two types of glory. There is earthly glory and there is eternal glory. And anytime we're talking about earthly glory, we're talking about excelling in business, excelling in career, excelling in, in, in our home, excelling in ministry, excelling in anything that has to do with our life here on earth. That is earthly glory. We can also talk about the eternal glory. You know, the earthly glory is what they, in the conversation between Jesus and Satan. And Satan was saying, it's been given to him that the kingdom of this world and his glory has been given to him. But that was a lie because nobody gave it to him. But we can also talk about the eternal glory. And anytime we talk about the eternal glory, that is the one that God expects us to grow into continuously. We continuously transform into this glory, into his image, and into his likeness. It is the ultimate. In Psalm 17, verse 15, David said, As for me, I will behold his face in righteousness. I shall be glad when I appear in his likeness. So, to appear in his likeness, that's the ultimate glory. That's why the Bible says, Christ in you is the hope of glory. That's eternal glory. That's eternal glory. But this, this day, as we discuss about transcending into greater glory, I just share a story with you, and thereafter, I'll pray. There was a professor who was almost at the point of death and while he was at the point of death as he was praying to the lord you know like the kind of prayer that stephen prayed lord receive my spirit because he knew his time was up the lord showed him a vision of somebody who was playing a keyboard in that vision and he is a very good keyboardist he plays the piano plays the keyboard very well He's a professional that is highly respected in that field. But he saw somebody in this vision who was playing that keyboard and that piano far above his own level. And it shocked him. So in the course of his praying to round up his journey here on earth, he asked a simple question from the Lord. He said, Lord, who is this person playing the keyboard? And the Lord told him, that was the state you were expected to grow into. But you did not meet up. Now your time is up and you can never get into it again. I pray for you listening to the sound of my voice. As young people, that the Lord will help you that you grow into the fullness of your glory. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That fullness of glory that heaven had earmarked for you you will not miss it in the name of jesus because on this side of eternity god expects you to transcend every day into the level of greater glory and you will surely do that in the name of the lord jesus christ i want us to pray father in heaven we thank you we bless your name for your word that your people have been listening to since the beginning of this conference we thank you for the things that you have done. We give you praise for that which you are going to do today. Father, we ask that as we round up this program, Lord, the question was out, why did you delay the best until now? You always reserve the best until the last moment. I ask today that you will do the unusual in the name of Jesus. Lord, there shall be a release of your power, a release of your anointing, that by reason of the anointing, your people will receive the empowerment to grow into the fullness of that glory that is reserved for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you because you have had our prayers. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I want to read very quickly my text. 
which is taken from the book of Second Corinthians, chapter number three, verse ten. Second Corinthians three, verse ten. That's my scripture. Second Corinthians chapter three, verse number ten. Just open to it, Second Corinthians three, verse ten. And see what the word of God has to say in the book of Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. It said, for even that which was glorious, even that which was glorious, has no glory. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. I'm just going to read verse let me read it from verse 7. Permit me to read from verse 7. Second Corinthians 3, verse 7. But if the ministration of death, written and engraved in stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, we glory was to be done away. I go straight to verse 10. For even that which was made glorious had no glory in the respect by reason of the glory that excelleth. There was a glory of the old covenant. But in this new testament and in this new dispensation, that glory is already fading away and is being replaced by a better glory. You know, I told you before that glory is in stages. Glory is in Kedah. That professor, he saw somebody on the other side who was superior to him. The glory of that fellow was superior to his own. And that's the whole lesson of having a message like this at the roundup of this, of this uh, conference on transcend. That God expects us to ultimately grow into our best, into the best that he has made available for us. Every succeeding generation make it a point of duty to improve on what the previous generation did. I'm sure you'll agree with me. In fact, we have been told that the changes that will happen in the war in the next five years will be more than the changes that are taking place in the last hundred years. Because it's a word of change. Nothing is static. You will not be static in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Your glory will not be static in the name of the Lord Jesus. You will continue to transcend because I'm speaking on transcending. It's a continuous process. You will come to transcend. You come to transform into greater glory. Every day, your today will always be better than your yesterday. In the name of Jesus. Your tomorrow will always be better than today. In the name of Jesus. Because we are transcending into greater glory. Nothing is static. Your story will get better every day. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 18 says, But the path of the just is a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. God expects our life to shine brighter until we meet him in glory. Every day should be a better day. You will never have a better yesterday in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your today will always be better than your yesterday. Your tomorrow will always be better than your today. Because the Bible says the path of the just is like shining light. It shines brighter and brighter to a perfect day. In Psalm 84 verse 7, the same point is made. They go from strength unto strength. Every one of them in Zion until they appear before God. They go from strength to strength. You will go from strength to strength in the name of Jesus. You go from glory to glory in the name of Jesus. Your glory will continue to transcend. Continue to grow greater and greater, better and better, better and better in the mighty name of Jesus. You know, the first car was made in 1898. And that car can only run, run 30 miles per hour. That's the fastest speed it can make. Then by 1904, the Wright brothers came with the first aeroplane. As at that, 1898, the only means of moving fast was that car. And it ran only 30 miles per hour. There was nothing to fly. But by 1904, people began to fly. And by 1940, jet plane was invented. By 1950, 1960, we have the rockets that began to go. 
at very high speed. And by 1980, there was the space shuttle. So it's a, it's a, it's a world of progress. It was progress all the way from the day it started. And you know what? God started it all. Because in the story of creation, for the six days that God made the world, every day was better than the previous day. Every day there was an addition. Every day there was something else to add. And I pray for you today. Your tomorrow will always be better than your today. Every day of your life, from today, it shall be better in the name of Jesus. People prefer new and better things. Because God started it all. For the six days, it was added. For the six days, it was addition. It was addition. It was never a subtraction. You know, before 1967, there were these switch watchmakers. They were reigning in the world. When it comes to switch, switch, uh, when it comes to watch, the switch watchmakers, they were the number one in the world. Then, around 1967, Seiko came on board and they respected the Swiss, company, the Swiss companies as the number one in that area. So they went to them and they showed them what they had. And the Swiss companies just looked at them and they eased. That what is this? Uh, Reswatch with computer? Reswatch? This one can never fly. This one can never sell. And they dismissed them. But do you know that by the 1980s, Seiko had taken over the market completely from them. Why? Because it's a world of improvements. In every area of human endeavor, what you will observe, whether individuals, whether institutions, whether nations, they will excel over some years. And before you know it, somebody else will come with something better, with something more, you know, much more acceptable. Something that is a lot, lot better than what you had before. You know, that reminds me of the story of the first story building in Benin. I was told that the first story building in Benin, everybody gathered around it. They came from everywhere to come and look at the wonder of a building on top of another building. But not long after, the other end of town, there's another wonder of two buildings on top of a building. And... They all rushed to the place. And they left the man who had only one building on top of another building. That is the story of the world. At every point in time, in the life of a nation, in the life of a company, in the life of an individual, there's always something new happening. Only those of us who are in the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse chapter 3 verse 18 he said we all with open face are beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord and as we behold it we are continuously transformed from glory to glory by the spirit of the Lord you know I I also had the story of somebody you know who like many of us must have read in the papers for years, we have been told that very soon, oil will cease to be the number one value, valuable resource in the world. Until this year, Aramco, the uh, 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 Saudi Arabia oil company, had always been reckoned to be the most valuable company in the world. But this year, surprisingly, after many projections over the years, Apple took over from Aramco just to show the rate at which things are changing. That's why as God's people, we are the ones that have the spirit of God we should be able to transcend from glory to glory. Every enduring and greater glory and accomplishment is only traceable to transformation from heaven. Only those who know him. You know, just a while ago, I was reading about the story of inventors all over the world. And I discovered that quite a number of them are actually followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? 
Because the Bible says only the spirit that is a man can know what things of the spirit. Our God is a creator. And if you carry his spirit in you, you should be a creator. You should come up with new things all the time. And that's what it means to transcend from glory to glory. I know we are the one in our relationship with God. It is only in God that we are promised transformation from glory to glory. By the spirit of the Lord. 2 Corinthians 3.18 But we all with open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord are continuously changed and transformed into the same image from glory to glory even as by the spirit of the Lord. So we are already open to continuous transformation, to continuous improvement, to continuous exposure to greater glory. And greater glory will be your portion in the name of Jesus. Stagnancy is not godly. Stagnancy is not part of God. Our God is a God of progress. In Exodus chapter 14, verse 15, Then the Lord said to Moses, Why are you crying unto me? Tell the Israelites to move on. Some translations, they tell them to go forward. God is a God of advancement. God is a God of progress. You have to transcend into greater glory. And that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. There are quite a number of factors that will help us to transcend from glory to glory. Because that's another word for transcending to greater glory. That will enable us to transcend from glory to glory. Enable us to move from where we are to where God wants us to be. That will enable us not to be static. That enable us to access what the Spirit of God has for us. There are quite a number of factors. But first and foremost is the fact that for you to be a partaker of this transformation and this transcending from glory to glory, you must have a personal relationship with God. It was the secret of the ever-increasing glory of Abraham. Abraham had a personal relationship with God. That's why he was able to accomplish what his father could not accomplish. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 11, if you read the last two verses, as for the father of Abraham, Terah, he didn't have a relationship with God. So what happened to Terah? When Terah got, Terah his father, when he got to Aram, the Bible says he died in Aram. He couldn't proceed. He couldn't transcend into the level of glory that God had he amassed for their family. That level of glory was to take them to Canaan land. When their father left with Abraham, they left with the intention of going to Canaan land. Every one of you, as you are listening to the sound of my voice, there is a Canaan land in your life. And you will get there in the name of Jesus. You will not die in Haran in the mighty name of Jesus. Your journey will not be terminated untimely in the mighty name of Jesus. You will continually transcend. And it's only guaranteed by a personal relationship with the Lord. It was the secret of the ever-increasing glory of Joseph. If you read the book of Genesis, chapter 39, the story of Joseph, the Bible will keep on repeating, and the Lord was with Joseph, and the Lord was with Joseph, and the Lord was with Joseph. He had a personal relationship with God. So for anybody to think of transcending to greater glory, that is the first requirement. You cannot bypass it. It is not a, an option. You've got to have a relationship with the God of glory himself. Because without God, there is no glory. Until the glory of the Lord is risen upon you, you cannot shine. Say, arise and shine, for your light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Samson's glory was cut short. He couldn't transcend to the fullness of his glory. Why? Because the Bible says he did not know that the Lord has departed from him. The moment the Lord, the King of glory, departed from him, his glory was cut short. So what guarantees continuous transformation from glory to glory? What guarantees transcending unto greater glory is a personal relationship, a continuous relationship, and a continuous fellowship with the God of glory himself. That is why... If you look at the kingdoms around us, the empires around us, the British Empire, I'm sure we all know, 
was greater than the Roman Empire. And what was the difference? Because the British Empire, they ascribe a lot of honor and glory to the king of glory himself. In those days, when the king or the queen is being stored, the Bible plays prominent role. But with time, they began to dilute it. And they went into secularism. And as they were going into secularism, their own glory too was going down. Until America took over as the superpower of the world. And I'm sure you know the story of America too. After a while, America also decided and said, there will be no Ten Commandments in the schools. There will be no prayer in the schools. And you know what eventually happened to America? America that used to be superpower of the world. You know there was a time when they said, when the president of America sneezes, the world shivers. I'm sure you know it's not the case anymore. When the president of America speaks today, North Korea president will be the first to reply him. And then followed by Chinese president. Why? Because they did not continue their relationship with the king of glory. That's why their glory plummeted. Why? Psalm 127 verse 1 says, Except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. God himself is the king of glory. And he is the one, you know, in 1 Chronicles 29 verse 12, hear what the Bible says. It says, Both riches and honor come of you. And it is in your hand to make great and to give power to all. So the power to transcend in glory is with God. And until a man secures his relationship with God, he cannot be sure of transcending from glory to glory. Along the line, he might have a problem. You know what? Spirituality is the foundation for destiny. Anyone that wants his destiny fulfilled must have spirituality as the foundation. A spirituality that is found in a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Spirituality is the primary purpose of existence in life. Anyone that is not, that is not having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, is, the life might end up being a waste. It may be a, a life full of potentials. It may be a life that is smart. It may be a life that has a lot of things going for it. But at the end of the day, that life might just go as a waste. Because first of all, here or now, there will be other glory that will overtake it. And then when in heaven, there will be no hope. I pray that that will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Because in Matthew 6 and 3, the Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things shall be added unto you. You know, the moment the veil was taken away by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, the way was open. In 2 Corinthians 3.15, it says, When he shall turn to the law, the veil shall be taken away. I pray for somebody today who is yet to embrace personal relationship with Jesus, that the veil shall be taken away. Because without that, every other thing that I'm going to be talking about will not relate to you. You will not be able to put yourself in them. With Christ's death on the cross of Calvary, the veil was taken away. Until the veil is removed, a light of greater glory is impossible. <laughs> you know, I, I know somebody with a very close relation. When he finished school as a graduate, in those days, they were using job to beg them. So he got a job. But it was, it was not, he didn't have a personal relation with the Lord. So he got a job. And where he was working, he was being paid. But you know this person, after years of working, somebody close to me went to visit him. When he got to his sitting room, there was nothing in his sitting room. When he was trying to ask for transfer money to go back after visiting him, he took the person to the place where he normally buy bottles of beer and some other things, pepper soup and all that. And when he got there, the seller told this person who was looking for transfer money, he said, this person, if I open my book, I'll tell you how much he's owing me. A life that is Christless is a life of crisis. Can never think of greater glory. There are so many people who have great potentials. But because they didn't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, their potential one did not come out. And on top of it, they are a burden to their family. They are a burden to the nation. They are a burden to the world. But I pray for you, if you understand the sound of my voice, 
You will not end that way in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This person that I'm talking to, a few years later, he gave his life to Christ. I immediately gave his life to Christ. He was already aged evil. He got a wife. He got married. Before you knew it, he changed job. He ended up working in one of the very nice places in this country. The acceptance of Jesus into his life made all the difference. His personal relationship with God brought out his potentials and brought out the glory that the enemy was trying to bury. So for anyone to transcend from glory to glory, to transcend to greater glory, the first and most important condition is that that person must have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and with the King of Glory himself. Let me move very fast. The second thing that is very important, if we are going to transcend from glory to glory, after personal relationship with the Lord, is partnership. Partnership is so key. The journey of life cannot be lived alone. The journey of life, you will have to partner with people. You partner with people in business. You partner with people as husband and wife. You partner with others. And you know, someone has said, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go with people. So going far means going with people. But it depends on who you are going with. You know, there's a joke we normally crack. We say two heads are better than one if they are not empty heads. It depends on who you are going with. Proverbs 27 verse 17 says, Iron sharpened iron. So a man sharpened the countenance of his friend. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9, it said two are better than one because they have a better reward for their labor. He said, for if one fall, the other will lift up his fellow. But he said, but woe to him that is alone, because when he falls, he has no one to lift him up. I always tell people that for one who is walking alone, is falling. It's a matter of when. But for the one who is walking with another person supporting, is falling. It's a matter of if. There's a difference between the two. So partnership is so key and as important and key as partnership is, beloved, on your path to ever, ever increasing glory, on your path to transcending to greater glory, who you go with is important. Who is your partner? Because the level of your glory in life will be determined by who is going with you. Everyone that entered the same ship with Jonah ended up a loser. Because of only Jonah, they not only lost their goods and their properties, they were almost losing their life, if not that God had mercy on them. So who you go with in this journey of life is so important. Be mindful who is in the same boat with you in the journey of life. Everyone that enters ship with Jonah, like I told you, lost all their properties. The person you marry or do business with can either increase your glory or terminate it. It's so important. Samson's glory was terminated by his relationship with Delilah. I know in some of the sessions we have gone through, that's why I told you that this session is meant to wrap up. They must have told you the importance of this. The importance of relationship. An agreement between a God-fearing husband and his wife is the greatest and the strongest agreement on planet Earth. Life is less burdensome if lived together with somebody of the same faith. Marriage is a mirror of true success. There are people who have succeeded in their profession. They have succeeded in every other area of life. But when they failed at home, when they failed in the choice of who they marry, Every other success just promoted. Every other success counts for nothing. Their glory that was growing suddenly plummeted because of failure in this area. You will not fail in this area in the name of Jesus. The pages of history are also full of men whose initial successes were derailed because of their failure at home. You will not fail in this area. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I, I can stand here and begin to count for you. How many people who are potential sources, potentially great people, but who are derailed for this reason. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 14. The Bible says, Be ye not unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship 
as righteousness with unrighteousness. And we, what communion? As light with darkness. Be not unequally yoked. Whether in business, whether in marriage. You know, today, there's so much temptation. Particularly on the part of our young ladies. There's so much temptation to want to be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. But I can inform you ahead. I can tell you for free that it's worse than hell. It is worse than hell. By the grace of God, I'll be opportuned to intervene in one or two situations. And I saw that the whole problem was because of their not being careful in the area of being unequally yoked. What a business. There are people who have been unequally yoked in business. You know, there was somebody I know very well. He was unequally yoked in business. And for the years he spent with this, his unbeliever partners, he never made progress. The year those partners came to him and told him, I think we are tired of this, your preaching and this, your Bible. I think everybody should go his way. That same year, if you see the kind of progress he made, why? Because the Bible already warned us, don't be unequally yoked. There is no communion between light and darkness. So if you want to go far, and if you want to transcend from glory to glory, transcend to greater glory, who you partner with is very critical. Partner with those who carry the same spirit with you. Because if you don't partner with those who carry the same spirit with you, you will be praying and binding and loosing will be the only assignment you will do in your business. You will not be able to face the business itself. But I know the Lord is going to help you in Jesus' name. Of course, the next thing that is very important and critical, if we are going to transcend from glory to glory, is passion for the word of God. Passion for the word of God. The Lord told Joshua, in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. For then thou shalt make the way prosperous and have good success. Passion for God's word. Today, I want to inform you that the only way to transcend from glory to glory is to have passion for the word of God. Look at Peter. Peter as a fisherman. The glory of his profession was coming to an end. In Luke chapter 5 verse 5, and Jesus came on the scene. The Bible says he was already washing his net. Business was over because the glory was already plummeting. It was going down already and he can see the handwriting. He has toiled all night. He didn't catch anything. So there was no business, no progress, no potential for this business anymore. He was thinking of packing it up when Jesus showed up on the scene and Jesus said, Peter, let down your net. And Peter replied in Luke chapter 5 verse 5, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, the word makes all the difference. The word makes all the difference. Passion for God's word. You want to transcend from glory to glory. You cannot do it without having passion for the word of God. You must be ready to study the word of God. You know the Bible, the, Paul the Apostle was saying, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of God. One scripture that I love so much is 1 Timothy chapter 4 verse 15. Look at what it says about passion for the word. It says, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them that your profiting may appear to all. In other words, when you meditate on God's word, there's no way your glory will not show. When you meditate on God's word, you give yourself to the study of God's word. There's no way the glory will not show forth in your life. Peter's business was already packing up. But the word came. Peter said, nevertheless at your word, in Psalm 107 verse 20, it says he sent his war. And the war healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. I know so many people whose business, whose career, whose, whose program in life was about to terminate. But just a word, just a word from God opened a fresh way for them. You know, sometimes when you think it is the end of the road, it's actually a bend in the road. And the only way you can actually discover the new road is... A lot of time through the word of God. Through the word of God. I've shared this story several times. When uh, our man, who is a great inventor, you know, Thomas Edison, was going to invent the popular fluorescent tube. 
And people have written a lot about it that he tried and tried and tried and he couldn't. But in the account that I read about what really happened, he said in October 1879 at New Jersey, that was where he had his lab, after 13 months of labor with no headway, every effort yielded no result. A lot of money has been spent. He was just thinking of packing it up. In the midst of it, he just had in his ear let there be light. And he reckoned that that was the word of God. That let there be light. And there was light. And he began to scream around the lab. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be light. In the process, the next ligament he put his hand on was what resulted in the fluorescent tube. And that was the end of his toiling. The result came. Each time you are able to get the rhema of the world, I'm not talking of logos. I'm talking of the rhema of the world. Because the Bible says that the word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. By the special grace of God, I don't have time. I will have shared with you. My wife, I got through the word. My job, I got through the word. Even ministry, I got through the word. The word has everything. Whatever you are looking for is in the world. No wonder God told Joshua, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night, for then you shall make your way prosperous, and you shall have good success. I recommend the word to you today, that if only you bury yourself inside the world, your glory can never remain the same. Your life will transcend from glory to glory. Do you know what? Thomas Edison was credited with over a thousand inventions before he died. In actual fact, there was a very terrible incident that happened to this man. You know, at about his middle age, his lab got burnt. All the things he had labored for got burnt. And he buried himself in the wall and found another wall that God is a God of new things. Eventually, he was able to put up a better lab. Why? Because he was always in the world. That's why his glory continued to transcend and transcend till he died. I pray for you under the sound of my voice. Your glory will go from glory to glory. You will go from glory to glory. Your glory will grow greater and greater and greater. Your tomorrow will always be better than your today. Your, your today will always be better than your yesterday. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The next thing that is so important in this journey to greater glory is prayer. Is prayer. In fact, after you have located the word that match what you are looking for, what you need to do is to turn it to prayer. Turn it to prayer. Because without prayer, I tell you, beloved, anything that will last in this world must be a product of prayer. It must be a product of prayer. Without prayer, nothing will last. We are transformed from glory to glory in the place of prayer. Second Corinthians 4.18 we are with open face. Open face. That's the place of prayer. Prayer and fasting is the foundation for ever increasing glory. When the enemy wanted to stop the greatness and the, con the, the continuous growth of the glory of Daniel, what did he attempt to do? He attempted to stop him from praying. Because he know that as long as Daniel continued to pray, he will grow from glory to glory. His glory will continue to transcend. You know, I was promoted some time ago and people started calling me here and there. Congratulations, congratulations. And one call I will never forget was the call I got from somebody. And he said, Pastor Sam, congratulations. I rejoice with you. He said, but take note that for every new level, there's a new devil. But you can handle him with prayer. So I'm glad to announce to you that with every new level of glory, there's a new devil waiting. But you can handle him with prayer. You can pray your way into greater glory like Jabez. Jabez had no glory at all in his foundation. But he prayed his way into greater glory. At the conclusion, the Bible says, and Jabez was more honorable than all his brethren because the Lord granted him that which is requested. Until you are able to pray, you are not ready for greater glory. Because the number of things, the number of odds that are against your greater glory are more. And you need the help of God to be able to break through. 
But I can assure you that if only you can pray, like John Wesley said, he said, God does not do anything of eternal value unless somebody asks him. He said, you have not because you ask not. You ask and you didn't receive because you asked to consume upon your loss. If you can get going in the place of prayer, I can assure you that your glory will continue to transcend from glory to glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Prayer can change an unknown pers an unknown destiny to a glorious destiny. That's what happened to Jabez. What of Jacob? Jacob struggled from his mother's womb. Jacob would have been a non-entity. But in the place of prayer, the Bible said he had to be told you have wrestled with God and with men and you have prevailed. Where did he prevail? It's in the place of prayer. Not with gun, not, not with uh, machete, not with sword. He prevailed in the place of prayer. If only you prevail in the place of prayer, your, the glow, grow, your growing glory will know no limit. Because you will have dealt with every barrier, you will have dealt with every hindrance. Very quickly, the next thing that is important on your journey to transcending glory is purity. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, the Bible says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Do you know that the man who will have been the president of France now? Not this current president. He was the one to contest to be the president of France. As at that time, he was the president of the World Bank. I think either World Bank or IMF. I'm sure some of us must have known the story. But because of impurity, because the Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. People picked it up as a reproach. They dug it out as a reproach in his life. And you know what? Not only did he lose the current position he was holding, he also couldn't attain to the, to the greater glory he was looking forward to. Sin brings shortage. That's why Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Anytime you're talking of transcending glory, it's the glory of God. You say, come short of the glory of God. Any sin that you refuse to stop will eventually stop you from getting to the place of greater glory. That's what happened to Joseph. Potiphar's wife was sent to Joseph to checkmate his glory. But Joseph was able to realize it. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? Because he knew that sin against God will just checkmate his glory. Sin against God will never get him to the fullness of his glory. I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice who is still battling one sin or the other. I pray for you today. May you be delivered in the name of Jesus. Sin drowned the first man. Drove the first man out of Eden. I'm sure you still remember Adam. Eden was a place of pleasure. Eden was a place of bliss. But because of sin, God drove him out. God drove him out. Saw the king of Israel. Lost his kingdom because of sin. God said, now the kingdom is taken away from you. And is given to your neighbor. How painful. Sin is a reproach. Sin brings shortage when it comes to the business of glory. I pray for you today. May sin not ground your glory in the name of Jesus. And the last but not the least that I'm going to talk about on your journey to greater glory is power. <laughs> power. Power is ability. Power talks of ability. Ability to do. That's why when we are talking about power gifts, we always talk about the doing gifts. They are the power gifts of the Spirit. The Bible says, for the children have come to birth and there is no strength to deliver. There are so many things that people will have loved to do. The most painful thing in this world is to know what to do and not have power to do it. Power, you need power. That's why in Acts 10, 38, we are told about Jesus. Our God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about doing. He went about doing. He went about doing. Whatever you have imagined to do. To enter into greater glory. It's impossible without power. You need power to enter into it. He went about doing. In fact, the Bible tells us in Acts chapter 1 verse 1. He said, the former treaty have I written unto you, O Theophilus. Of all that Jesus began to do. 
and to teach. Jesus is a doing man. He's an action man. He went about doing good and delivering all that were oppressed of the devil. As you are seated there, I know there are some of you who are wishing, you know, what they say, if wishes were horses, even beggars will ride. Doing is the ultimate. Doing is so important. Doing is so key. Doing is so critical. You need the power to do. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, hear what the word of God says. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. We can only do according to the power. We can only do according to the power. So the first power that you actually need is the power to plan. You need the power to plan. You say according to the power that works in us. Every great thing begins with a plan. There are so many lives that will never get into the fullness of their glory because of lack of plan. Planlessness is the killer of destiny. There must be a plan. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 2, I mean, Abaku chapter 2 verse 2, the Bible says, And the Lord said unto me, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. Without a plan and a goal, anywhere is okay. No plan, no goal for greater glory. Vehicles don't determine where you're going. You determine your destination by yourself before you get to park. You can't go to the park and just get there and say, well, any vehicle available, any vehicle, and you enter. You find yourself where you never planned for. You know one thing? When you refuse to plan in life, life will plan you out. It's so key to plan. The great Bishop Benzi Dowser said, he who fails to plan has already planned to fail. Power to plan. That's the first thing. That's the first power. If you fail to plan, life will plan you out. It is impossible to end up in God's plan and greater glory without a plan. Where are you going? That's the question I'm asking you today. In your profession, where are you going? In your academics, where are you going? In your family, where are you going? Do you have a destination in mind? You know, God so respects us in Psalm 20 verse 4. Say, grant you according to your own heart and fulfill all your cancer. That's God speaking. So God respects what goes on inside you. Do you know that in Genesis chapter 11 verse 6, did you see what God said? He said, these people, all that they have imagined to do, nothing shall be withheld from them. What they have imagined to do. He said, because they are one. I pray for you. May you imagine greater glory. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When God was dealing with Abraham and he saw that his level was too low, you know what God did to him? He brought him out of the house and he began to show him plan. He showed Abraham, he gave him a plan. Power to plan. He gave him a plan in Genesis 13 verse 14 to 15. He said, lift up your eyes now and look from where you are. In other words, God reckoned with it that where he is was low. But he was only telling him that that is not your final destination. There's a greater plan. There's a greater glory ahead of you. Look from where you are. And he said, look northward and southward and eastward and westward. For all the land that you see, I have given to you. That's a plan. That's a plan. What did he tell his apostles when he was sending them out? He told them, he said, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Our God is a God of planning. He gave them a plan. He gave them a plan of greater glory. That you, you, you are not going to perish in Jerusalem. You are going to move to Judea. You won't stop in Judea. You move to Samaria. You won't stop in Samaria. You move to the uttermost part of the air. In other words, you go from local government. You go to state level. You move from state level. You go to national level. And you go from national level. You go to international level. I see some of you entering into the international scene. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That's what greater glory means. Your plan must be broad. Your plan must be big. If you plan small, you remain small. If you plan big, you grow big. And that will be your lot in Jesus' name. Power to pursue. Power to pursue. That's the next power that you need. Power to pursue. No matter how great a plan for greater glory you have, you need power to pursue it. Of what use is a plan without pursuit? I used to tell people, I said... 
Any vision without action is television. Any vision without action is television. And of what use is television? It's only to watch it. In fact, sometimes when you are sleeping and you are watching television, then the question will be who is watching who? Are you the one watching television or television is watching you? Vision without action is television. Diligence in pursuit is the way to the top. In Proverbs 22 verse 29, it says, See thou a man that is diligent in his business. He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before me, man. You can say you have a great plan. Congratulations. But how, more, how ready are you to pursue it? How ready are you to pursue it? Whatever is not worked on cannot ever work out. <laughs> you know, some people say eh, that plan didn't work out. Meanwhile, they were the one who didn't work on it. Any plan you refuse to work on can never work out. How you work today determines how you stand tomorrow. Your today determines your tomorrow to a large extent. Vision without action is television. Enough of talks about dreams and vision of greater glory. Do something now. You know, I, I've told this story before of one man called Dr. Frank. Dr. Frank had a great plan that if only he has one million dollars, he's going to build a, a school, very standard school. And what happened to Dr. Frank? For two years, Dr. Frank was only thinking in his heart, ha! if only I have one million dollars, I'll build an, a very great school. Only a plan, nothing more. After two years, because he's a child of God, like I told you, the Spirit of God began to speak to him. You need to do something. Then the Lord gave him an idea that all he needed to do is to organize a seminar. Pay posters all over the town and say, come and learn what to do if you have one million dollars. And you know the type of people that will come there? I'm sure it's people who have one million dollars and above. Because somebody who has no one million dollars has no business coming there. So that was how he gathered all the millionaires together. And he prayed, he almost prayed himself out. You know, I'm talking about prayer today. He prayed, he prayed throughout the night he was praying. In fact, he dressed and put the notes of his, his seminar note. He put it on that. It was on it, he knelt. And he prayed throughout the night. When he, by the time he looked at time, it was almost time. He was late. That was how he ran out of the house. He forgot his sermon note. When he got to the venue, as he climbed the pulpit to begin to deliver the seminar paper, he discovered that he had forgotten it at home. But you know, for two years, he's been thinking about what to do if he has one million dollars. So it was easy for him to deliver the lecture without his lecture note. And as soon as he finished, a man walked up to him, Philip D. Amor, and he shook his hand. He said, you have impressed me today and you have convinced me that you know what to do with one million dollars. Action! Action! Now so many people have very grandiose plan. Very grand, and they keep postponing and postponing. I will start tomorrow. I will start next year. I will start next month. Do you know what? Procrastination is the killer of destiny. Action now. The man shook his hand and said, meet me in my office and pick your check of $1 million. And that's why the man, Dr. Frank, was able to start what is known today as Illinois School Institute of Technology in America. With the money that he was given. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10 says, Whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. For there is no work, nor device, nor wisdom in the grave where thou goest. Acts 10 38 thought about Jesus. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth and he went about planning. Is that what he did? He went about envisioning. Is that what he did? The Bible says he went about doing. Doing is the ultimate in life. Do something. Do something. You have planned enough. You have prayed enough. Do something. God was with him. The next is the power to persist. Because sometimes it doesn't come easy. Power to persist. In every promised land, there are giants. And you need the power of persistence to conquer them. Visions do not speak at the beginning, but at the end. And only those who persist till the end of their vision will see it fulfilled. If you have a vision of greater glory, it will never manifest at the beginning. You've got to persist till the end, because it is the end that will justify the means. 
The Bible tells us, it said, though your beginning may be small, it said, but your later end shall greatly increase. You need to persist to the end. In that Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3, it said, for the vision is for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Every vision speaks at the end. And only those who are standing at the end will be able to see the vision being fulfilled. You know, there was this woman, they called Mata Berry. She was a widow in America. She wanted to start a school. She had a dream of starting a school. So she wrote to Henry Ford. You know, Henry Ford is one of the popular people who are rich in America. And he wrote to him and said, I need money to start a school. And Henry Ford, maybe because looking at her, he said, can this one manage real money? Gave this woman only one cent. Can you imagine? Somebody wanted to start a school, was, she was giving one cent. And the woman went away with one cent and went to buy seeds. She went to buy seeds, vegetable seeds, and planted it in her garden. And after three harvests, three to four harvests, this woman was always keeping the money, saving the proceeds of each harvest. By the third or fourth harvest, this woman put the money together and began to read newspapers for old houses for sale. And luckily, if she saw one that was for sale. What I'm saying is that persistence is key. You see, remember the story of Elisha, the servant of Elijah. He said, the Lord has sent me to Bethel. He said, I will go. <laughs> the Lord has sent me to Giga. I will go. The Lord has sent me to Jordan. I will go. The Lord has sent me to Jericho. I will go. Persistence. When he got to the head of Jordan, he asked Elisha, what can I do for you? The man said, I want a double portion of your spirit. He said, you have asked for a hard thing. Nevertheless, if you carry the spirit of persistence and you can persist and you see me when I'm taken away, you will have it. There are so many people who have cut short their glory because of lack of persistence. Many people are too much in a hurry. And we always say that Rome was not built in a day. You need to persist. This woman, for me to conclude the story, after four harvests, she collected the proceeds and went to buy an old house and took the picture and went back to Henry Ford. Said, I want to see him again. <laughs> they were wondering, what is this woman coming for again? After giving you one cent, we thought you would be discouraged and go away. A persistent person is never discouraged. Elisha was not discouraged. The servant, the sons of the prophet came to him. They said, do you know that the Lord is taking your master away from your head today? He said, keep quiet. I know it. He continued. That did not discourage him. This woman was not discouraged. <laughs> she went there. Said, I want to see him. When eventually she was allowed to see Henry Ford, she brought her the picture of the old house that she had just bought. And Henry Ford said, from where did you get money to buy this? He said, from the one cent that you gave to me. And Henry Ford went in and drew a check of one million dollars and gave to this woman. He said, indeed, you deserve to build a school and you know what to do. Persistence. Persistence. The Bible says, cast not away therefore your confidence that has great recompense of reward. He said, for you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you can receive the promise. Next one is the power to prosper. Power to prosper. There is nothing like empty glory. Every glory carry weight. In fact, if you look at the translation of the word glory, it means weight. So there's weight. You need power to contact and retain wealth. In Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18, the Bible says, Thou shalt remember the Lord your God, for it is he who has given you the power to make wealth. As you listen to me and you are looking ahead to enter into greater glory, I see God releasing to you the power to make wealth. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will receive the power to make wealth. Every covenant is reinforced by sacrifice. It takes sacrifice to give. That's where people contact the power to make wealth. It's in the place of giving. God showed up to, Abra to Solomon the second time. In 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 13, he said, The Lord appeared to Solomon the second time and said, I have heard your prayers. There are so many people, of, many of us who have overprayed. <laughs> a 
Like God told Solomon, I've heard your prayers, but I have chosen this place for myself as a place of sacrifice. There are so many people, what God is waiting for is their sacrifice. To enter into the fullness of their glory. They have prayed, they have planned, they have taken action. All he's waiting for is, what are you going to give as a token of that greater glory you want to enter into? And look, they don't have anything. They don't want to give. Ralph Mahoney was called into ministry at the age of 22. And he made a covenant with God. He said, God, even though I'm in ministry, I will double tithe. Instead of paying 10%, he will pay 20% of his income. He ended up being one of the richest preachers. In fact, there's a book, they call it Shepherd's Staff. Ralph Mahoney distributes, distributes it all over the world, free of charge, because of his wealth. And I'm sure you have heard about Rick and Kay Warren. Rick Warren, the man that wrote, you know, the, the very popular book, Purpose Driven Life. That man, he walked with God to the extent that at a point, he told God on the day of his marriage, he said, God, every additional year of my married life will be an additional 1% to my tithe. So at the end of his first year as a married man, he started paying 11%. Second year, 12%. Third year, 13%. He didn't do it for too long because God, before God blessed him. And God so blessed him, the salaries he has collected from the church about 25 to 30 years ago, he calculated everything and paid it back to the church. Today, I read just a while ago that he's doing what we call reverse tithing today. You know what reverse tithing means? Instead of giving God 10% and taking 90%, he gives God 90% and takes 10% because he has more than enough. Sacrifice, that's the key. God is interested. In Zechariah 170, say, Cry yet saying, the, Thus hear the Lord of hosts, my cities through prosperity. 